Anglican Church International. Thank you for joining our service on this morning. We honor your presence on this morning. We're so grateful to have you with us on this morning. Amen. Amen. As we enter into our service, we ask that you feel free to join in. Feel free to comment. Feel free to lift your hands. Uh, this is a free zone. This is a safe place. Uh, we thank God for you. We we honor you and uh, all over the world. We thank God for you tuning in over this evening over in uh, uh, Southwest Asia. Uh, we thank God for you on the West Coast who got up early to join our service. We, we appreciate you and we thank God for you. We ask that you be a participant with us on this morning and go ahead and hit the share button. Share this service with those who you know who, who need to hear a powerful message, a powerful word, and receive an impartation from the Lord on today. This is an opportunity for you to be a partaker in spreading the gospel, taking the gospel to the world, and we ask that you uh, just join us on this morning. Amen? And as you do, also just continue to just in, in join with us in this prayer as we're praying. For those of you, if this is your first time, uh, we welcome you to the Kingdom of Heaven's Church International Service on this Sunday morning. And we are so grateful that you, 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 you made a quality decision to join us. We uh, believe that this is not by mistake or just a happenstance. We believe that it was God who drew you to this service on this morning because there is a word for you. And so we thank God for you and we welcome you. We welcome you, welcome you. Those of you who have been already been participating in our services and, and you would like to uh, become a member. God has spoken to your heart and said that to you that this is the brook that you're to be fed from and you want to join this service. Amen. Go to our website at www.thekohci.org org and uh go uh, to the tab that says connect with us and uh, connect with us and fill out the fill out the form with your information that says i'm saved and as you fill out that form that says i'm, I'm, I'm saved in that form also uh, let us know that you are just if you're that if you've already received salvation and accepted jesus just let us know that god has uh called you to join this ministry amen and we will contact you and get back with you and communicate with you amen amen we bless god for you amen what a beautiful day, a beautiful opportunity, amen, to gather together with the champions. Let's go ahead and enter into our, our prayer service, amen, our intercessory prayer on this morning, amen. And as you enter in, enter in with thanksgiving, amen. Enter in, in, in with a praise in your heart, amen. We thank God for this opportunity to minister to you on this morning, amen. And so let's enter into this prayer this morning, amen. Father, we give you glory. And we thank you, Lord, right now, Lord, for the gathering of the champions. We thank you, Lord, right now, Lord, that we come with clear intention, Lord, clear purpose, Lord, with a heart totally focused on you. Our intention and our focus this morning is to hear the, a word from you, to receive, Lord, a word from you. Our purpose and our intention, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, is to come before your throne directly to you, Father, with an open heart, a clean heart, Lord, a pure heart, Father. We come, Lord, in worship. We come, Lord, expressing great gratitude, Father. We come, Lord, with thanksgiving in our heart, Father, for what you've done, appreciating the things that you've done for us, appreciating you being a keeper, Father, appreciating and honoring you for being our shield and our buckler, Father. We thank you, Lord, right now, Lord, for being our provider. Amen. Praise God. Lord, you've provided, Lord, for us. You've been a way maker for us, Father, and we just thank you this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for keeping us in perfect peace, Father. As situations arise all across the world, as situations in chaos, Lord, even try to come into our lives, we thank you, Lord, for shielding us, Father, and keeping us, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. Oh, Father, we come, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, or with set hearts and set minds, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, to, Lord, experience the flow of your very presence, experience Father, the flow, Lord, of your word, Lord, piercing our hearts, Father, like never before, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
We thank you, Lord, right now that the word that is coming forth on this morning is coming forth with power. It's coming forth with authority. It's coming forth with your truth, with revelation, knowledge flowing freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force, Father. We thank you, Lord, that as your word goes forth, Father, it will flow like never before. Your wisdom, Father, in the name of Jesus, will flow like never before in the name of Jesus. Articulate, Lord, every word, Lord, that is spoken, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we sanction the atmosphere. We sanction the airways in the name of Jesus. We, in the name of Jesus, force open the way with our praise, with our thanksgiving, Father. We force open the way, Lord, for you to flow, Lord, in the name of Jesus, through the internet, Father, into every house, every home, every car, Lord, every office, in the name of Jesus. And as you flow, Father, meet your people where they are. Saturate them with your very presence right where they are, Father. Cause them to sense your glory, hallelujah, Lord, flowing upon them and flowing through them. Cause them, Father, in the name of Jesus, to experience, Father, a close encounter with you on this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for signs, wonders, and miracles taking place in the lives of everyone that has made a quality decision to join our service on this morning. There are some of you who are in expectation for miracles. There are some of you in expectation for signs and for wonders, for answered prayer. In the name of Jesus, I declare that today is your day. I uh, put that in the chat box. If you agree with me, if you are declaring that today is my day, hallelujah, to see the salvation of the Lord in my life. Today is my day. And, and some of you might be saying, I'm not worthy. The devil is alive this morning. The blood of Jesus has made you worthy that you experience the manifestation of the promises of God in your life. The blood of Jesus has made you righteous and accepted. Hallelujah. So that's why we are able to go boldly before the throne of God on this morning in the name of Jesus and experience his grace. So if you did feel worthy, I declare to you that you are worthy. And I need you to agree with me and I need you to declare right now I'm worthy, hallelujah, of the promises of God. So long we've been experiencing, hallelujah, heartaches and pains, and we've been experiencing the chaos, hallelujah. But today we 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 are not we're no longer taking the nonsense. We're no longer allowing the enemy to overtake us, to beat us down. You are the righteousness of God, hallelujah. You are hallelujah, covered in the blood of Jesus and seated in heavenly places and at the right hand of the Father with him. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm in position. You see, seated at the right hand of the Father puts you in a position to speak directly to the Father through Jesus. And so I'm declaring to you that you are worthy and you are righteous. And you have the Father's ear. So whatever it is you've been believing for, whatever it is you, uh, you are in need of right now, this is the time for your need to be met. This is the time for you to receive or let me say take possession of the promises of God. What is it that you desire from the Lord on this morning? Today is your day. And I'm declaring to you that God will, is, is beginning to move on your behalf. He's already moved on your behalf. And, and, and what you've been looking for and what you've been expecting to happen, it will not happen the way you've expected it. There are going to be unusual moves of God to take place to bring his promise to pass in your life. Somebody say, I received that on this morning. There will be unusual people that God will use. Hallelujah to be the answer to some of your prayers on this morning. There will be unusual situations that take place and that you'll be put in, hallelujah, that, that you'll experience the power of God, hallelujah, moving on the situation on your behalf, hallelujah. There's someone right now in the name of Jesus, the Spirit of God is moving upon you right now, hallelujah. And as he's moving upon you right now, he's coming to overtake you and overwhelm you with his love, hallelujah. Because suicide is not the option. Some of you thought you lost your mind and you're ready to give up, but God said no. I have work for you to do. 
there is more to you, hallelujah, than the world has experienced. And so today is your day for the greatness of God, hallelujah, to be experienced and manifest, hallelujah, in your life. Come on, give God praise. Father, we thank you, Lord, right now, Lord, that your people are in perfect peace, Father. Thank you that our minds are set according to your word. We have set our minds and come into agreement with your word, and your word is our answer. Your word is our promise, Father. Your word is what we stand on, and we shall not be moved. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, Father, that you're already making a way. It's already took, taking place, Father and it is about to manifest in this natural realm in Jesus' mighty name. We pray, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus that you continue to move upon our government, Father. We come against all the chaos. We come against all of the division in the name of Jesus. And when we, we declare right now those that are against your will, Father, against your move, Father, we declare right now their removal in the name of Jesus. We speak and we declare that they are fired in the name of Jesus. And we declare that their end has come. Their services are no longer needed. And Father, we pray for those, Lord, in the name of Jesus who will, Lord, ask according to your will on behalf of your people be placed in a position in, in, in offices father in the name of Jesus in our government system father every governor of every state every mayor of every city every councilman and councilwoman we lift up unto you father because your word declares that when the righteous are unruled the people rejoice father and so I declare right now Lord that Lord we are rejoicing in the name of Jesus father Lord as the transition is taking place in the name of Jesus Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, right now, Lord, that there will be a prophetic word spoken on this morning that will catapult, Lord, your people into, Lord, their, into, into your promise, Father. A word, a prophetic word will be spoken, Father, that will catapult your people into their ministries in the name of Jesus. There is a prophetic word in the name of Jesus that will cause restoration in the name of Jesus. I declare right now peace will be released in the atmosphere. It's being released right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Deliverance and forgiveness is being released right now in the name of Jesus. Restoration of all things and revival is taking place right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, if you agree with me, give God praise. Come on, sanction the atmosphere with your praise. Sanction the atmosphere with your worship. Sanction the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Get into agreement with me this morning in the name of Jesus. We declare that the truth will be spoken in the name of Jesus. We declare, declare this with me. I will not exchange your truth for the lies of the world. Lord, I will not exchange the truth for the lies of the world. I will not compromise to get what I want in my flesh. Not my will, Lord, but your will be done in Jesus' mighty name. Father, you have made us righteous and you have made us accepted through the blood of Jesus. Therefore, we step into our sonship. We step, point, we step into our rightful positions and no good thing is withheld from us on this morning in the name of Jesus. I declare to you this morning that today is the best day. Hallelujah. Today is the best day and for the rest of your life in the name of Jesus. I declare to you this morning in the name of Jesus that you are a winner. You are victorious. You are the trophies that are set up on display. I declare to you that as we continue out to, to finish this year out for these last 25 and 26 days that we have in the name of Jesus that you will, Lord, trend, you will transition out of this year in peace and you will transition into to this next year hallelujah and chronologically in peace I declare that you are in peace right now in the name of Jesus that peace is the peace in your finances peace in your home peace in your relationships peace in your career peace in your business peace in your children in the name of Jesus peace in your soul in the name of Jesus your life is a life hallelujah of peace hallelujah your life is a life filled with the glory and the promises of God manifested in your life like never before hallelujah come on and agree with me in the name of Jesus come on and agree with me in the name of Jesus say this with me I declare
that I have sanctioned my atmosphere. I declare that I am worshiping under an open heaven. I declare in the name of Jesus that there is no hindrance and no blockage in the name of Jesus. I declare that the power of God and the presence of God is flowing in my house flowing through me right now in the name of Jesus. Say this with me, come on. I declare that I am a living miracle. And because of that, miracles flow through me. Miracles flow through me and they flow to me. I declare that I exercise the word of God without fear and doubt. I declare that I speak the word of God in boldness and great expectation. Therefore, I experience the power of God manifesting in my life, in every situation, in every circumstance, Things do not look as they appear because the word is my answer and the word that I speak takes shape and form to that which I have spoken to bring about the manifestation of God's glory in my life and those who I come into contact with. Now, if you believe that, give God your best praise on this morning. Make some noise for Jesus on this morning. Hallelujah. You, hallelujah, are the living testimony. You are the carrier of the kingdom. And you are, hallelujah, the walking and living in the promises of God. Releasing the promises of God in the earth. Manifesting the glory of God in this earth. Come on, will you give God praise on this morning? Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come standing in the need, hallelujah. Lord, in the need, Father, in the name of Jesus, on the intercede on the behalf of the families that are in bereavement in the name of Jesus. We stand in the gap, Father, in the name of Jesus. We stand in intercession in the name of Jesus. And we release healing in the name of Jesus. We release strength in the name of Jesus to those families that are in bereavement. In the name of Jesus, you sent the comforter and we release comfort in the name of Jesus, Father, as they go through this time. Thank you that you are a strengthener in the name of Jesus. Strengthen those families that are right now that are going through in the name of Jesus bereavement. In the name of Jesus, strengthen them and give them, Father, in the name of Jesus, the wisdom to move forward in their lives. In the name of Jesus, Father, give them the strength Father, to honor their loved ones, hallelujah, that has gone home to be with you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray for those who are battling sickness and disease. Your word declares that by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. You told us in your word that Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Therefore, Father, we send forth the word of healing in the name of Jesus, and as we we release the word of healing in the name of Jesus. We bind cancer. We bind heart disease. We bind high blood pressure. We bind diabetes. We bind the coronavirus. We bind in the name of Jesus MS in the name of Jesus and we release healing in the name of Jesus. Healing be released. Healing be released. We send forth healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. Receive the healing in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Father your power is being released and we lift our hands as an expression of our gratitude as an expression of thanksgiving we give you praise in the name of Jesus we go before in the name of Jesus with you Father in the name of Jesus we remove every yoke we destroy every burden that has hindered your people in the name of Jesus I declare that we will not be stopped your word will manifest in the name of Jesus we command those who in the name of Jesus are going through right now in the name of Jesus Lord that they have counted out in the name of Jesus that they have given up 
on in the name of Jesus. We breathe the, left, the breath of life into their lives in the name of Jesus. And we say you will live and not die. Declare the word of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Come on and receive that right now. Receive it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, I sense the power of God in this place. I sense the presence of God in this place. We release the presence of God in the name of Jesus. When you give God praise and when you thank God for what he's already done, hallelujah, he inhabits the praise of his people. Not only inhabits the praise of his people, he moves on behalf of his people to bring his word to pass, hallelujah. If you agree with me, hallelujah, make sure you put it in the chat box right now and begin to give God praise, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God a shout on this morning. Hallelujah. Yes. Father, we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you are not a man that you should lie. And as I stand before your people, I am in you. Therefore, I am not a man that I should lie. Hallelujah. Because I am in agreement with you. Every word that I've spoken shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, right now for the abundance and the overflow of healing taking place right now. I thank you for the overflow and the abundance of miracles that are taking place right now. I thank you, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that, Lord, not only miracles are taking place, but souls are being saved. Lord, in the name of Jesus, families are being restored in the name of Jesus. People are being delivered from alcoholism. People are being delivered from drug abuse and drug abuse. And in the name of Jesus, I declare right now for those whose family members, hallelujah, have been, Lord, and have been sold their souls to the devil. I call you out of the witchcraft. I call you out of the sorcery in the name of Jesus. I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. And I declare that you cannot have our children in the name of Jesus. And I call them back into, hallelujah, the kingdom fold in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, there's deliverance going on right now in the name of Jesus. I bind every demonic force that have hindered it and your people in the name of Jesus. I bind every demonic force, hallelujah, that have tried to stop your people. And I declare that your word will not be stopped. I declare that this word will penetrate the hearts and souls, the penetrate the earth to the whole earth is shook up in the name of Jesus. I uncover every satanic attack. I uncover every person that is operating in satanism and demonic forces and sorcery in the name of Jesus. No longer will you be able to hide in the name of Jesus. No longer will you be able to fake living as a Christian, living the lie of a Christian, but operating as a witch. Jesus, I call you out in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, I thank you that your word is coming forth. I thank you for the prophetess, Lord. I thank you that you have filled her through and through with your spirit and with your word. And I thank you, Lord, that as she speak, every word that's spoken will be from your mouth. Every word that is spoken will go forth with your power, with your authority in the name of Jesus. Every word that is spoken, hallelujah, will transform the lives of your people like never before in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, right now that you filled her through and through to the point of overflowing through her. And I thank you, Lord, right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you're speaking through her vocal cords, thinking through her mind. Take total control of her, Father, in the name of Jesus. Overwhelm her with your wisdom in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that as she speaks prophetically, Father, every word that is spoken, hallelujah, will, Lord, release your promise into the lives of your people in Jesus' mighty name. Come on and give God praise. Give God praise. And if you didn't share it already, go ahead and share. Share, share, share. Because this is a powerful word, a life-changing word that needs to be heard in Jesus' mighty name. Come on to give God praise. Welcome the presence of the prophetess as she comes forth to Thank release you, the word of God in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's right. And being at great expectation, hallelujah, for what the Lord will speak to us today. Hallelujah. Say, my mind is set in peace today. My mind is set in the peace of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Totally yielded to the God of peace today. 
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. God, I go ahead and speak peace over every ear that is listening today. Not when, not just when the message is over, but right now, peace is being released to every home. The ability to receive, the will to receive what thus says the Lord, hallelujah, is being released right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, because of your willingness, hallelujah, because of your appreciation for who he is, peace be unto you. Peace is being given to you right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you as this message continues to go forth, hallelujah. I thank you that as the Lord continues to speak, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, that you'll begin to be escorted into different levels of peace from level to level just as you shift from glory to glory hallelujah you will begin to shift from different dimensions of peace right here in your life somebody say signs wonders and miracles different i, I decree it come on right now with the name of jesus i decree it and i release it right now come on and say this with me as i hear your word lord I receive it with gladness, with thanksgiving in my heart. And because of that, Lord, I thank you that right now you'll begin to move me, to escort me into multiple dimensions, hallelujah, and to elevated dimensions from peace to peace to peace, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, we thank God, hallelujah, that we've all, and we pray that we have all experienced a, thanks, a peaceful thanksgiving. Hallelujah. The Lord spoke to us. At least we should have. Amen. Hallelujah. An undisturbed thanksgiving, an undisturbed time of calm and quietness, of tranquil, with no panic and just at, at relaxing and at peace, hallelujah, at rest, hallelujah. How can we say this, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus? Because we went in. Somebody say, I went in that way. I went in with my mindset. I went in in agreement with the word of the Lord that was spoken unto me, hallelujah. So my atmosphere was set. And I was determined to not let go of what God has spoken to me. Just like Mary, I held on to every word that the Lord spoke to me concerning my peace. Come on, somebody say, I have a right to this. you got to get to the place where you pursue and you run after your rights and after every benefit. No longer worried about the benefits of the, of the world. Hallelujah. But I'm pursuing the benefits of the Lord. And one of the benefits of the Lord is to have his peace to walk in peace, to reign in peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, I found the secret. I've got the secret. Hallelujah. I've got my secret weapon this morning. I found out what it is. I know something that the enemy knows nothing about. I have access to something that the enemy does not have access to. Come on, somebody say, it's my peace. It's my peace. This is my life. I'm in peace. Hallelujah. It's my peace. It gives me the advantage. Hallelujah. I walk in atmospheres and chaos ceases. Hallelujah. I walk in the midst of chaotic situations and I'm not moved. Hallelujah. I'm tranquil. I'm drunken in peace and I fear nothing. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. I can be at rest. He's given me a secret, a secret mode of attack against the enemy. Hallelujah. Where I'm not moved and nothing changes about what the Lord has said about me. Although I'm going through a trial. See, he told us that trials and tribulations would come. Hallelujah. But he said he would be with us and he would be in us. Somebody say God's peace is with me and God's peace is in me. And I'm going to let the peace of God have its perfect work. It's complete work in me. Come on, it's time to make a decision to allow the peace of God to rule over you. That means you have to surrender. Somebody shout, I surrender right now, God. I surrender my thoughts and I exchange them for your thoughts. Thoughts of peace, hallelujah. Undisturbed. No fear. No panic. Not emotion-based. Hallelujah. Content with what you told me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on and declare it 
over your life today. Hallelujah. I went in in peace. Hallelujah. With an expectancy of peace. Hallelujah. Come on. I know this is blessing some of you because you've been agitated and disturbed. Hallelujah. And you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. So hallelujah. I dare you to demand it. I dare you to declare it. I dare you to receive it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Receive the peace of God with gladness. Hallelujah. That's what manifested in your lives because your atmosphere was set. Hallelujah. The Lord spoke that to us that we had entered into the beginning of an intentful lifestyle of thanksgiving. He had a strategy that he was releasing to us. And so we have to remain at his feet to receive the next instructions. Hallelujah. And he's continuing to give us instructions. Hallelujah. And he said to us to receive his words with gladness. Receive his words with gladness. With thankfulness. Not just for a season. But he, we had entered into a season of thanksgiving, hallelujah, which will in turn release a type of peace within you that surpasses all understanding. And to turn around and make it a practice every day in your life. Begin thanking him. Thanking him like never before. In everything. In every situation. Expecting perfect peace to come because you are thanking him. The way that he says you should thank him. To, and it begins to. Peace begins to build a mount over your heart. It begins to guard your mind. Hallelujah. Like never before. Somebody shout peace as a lifestyle. This is my life. I am in peace. If you expect, as Pastor said, to go out these last couple of uh, uh, these last couple of weeks and days of 2021 into the year of 2022, and to go into that year with the right mindset, controlled and under the influence of the Lord, thereby receiving the the, the signs, wonders, and miracles demonstrated by God by you through you of the Lord, then you've got to receive. This message that the Lord is speaking and releasing to us. Make it a practice every day. Begin to thank him like never before. This is my life. Somebody say that. This is my life. I'm in peace. This is my life. See, if you believe it, you'll say it. Out of the abundance, abundance of the heart, out of every thought that you have, your mouth begins to speak. Out of my mouth this morning, I shout that this is my life. I am in peace. See, the devil's already mad right now because some of you, he had you, qui he had you quiet and he had you bound where you wouldn't even say a thing. But we declare this morning, I declare that you've been un you're been beginning to be untangled right now. Untangled in your finances, untangled in your health, untangled in your relationships. Every thought is being untangled right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. As you begin to open up your mouth and declare the word of the Lord over your life. The word of the Lord is what brings you freedom. The word of the Lord is what unbounds you. The word of the Lord is what protects you and builds a wall around you. Builds a fortress around you that causes the enemy to let you go. Somebody say, he's letting me go. I see him letting me go right now. Uh-oh, I'm shifting to multiple dimensions of peace. Right now, I just felt the shift. Oh, God, tell him glory. Glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. Glory, God. We give you glory, God. We need you, Lord. We need your word. Your word is the needful thing. I'm walking in your peace. Hallelujah. I'm a body holy and fully flooded with you. Flooded with peace. Hallelujah. This is my life. I am in peace. Oh, my God. Y'all better get this today. Y'all better get this today. Y'all better receive this today. He tells us in John chapter 4. I believe it's around verse 27. That the peace that he left and gave us is not the type of peace that the world gives. So you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to worry about it leaving you. You don't have to worry about it not being available for you. Because this is a peace that causes us not to be troubled. And not to be afraid. Not as the world gives. Somebody shout, the power is in my peace. During this time of Thanksgiving, you should have 
literally felt a shift of peace being perfected in your life. Hallelujah. Why? Because you have made a decision and it was a result of a life and a mind that stayed on him as a perception. So you've got to change your perceptions. You've got to allow your perceptions. Peace will cause your perceptions to line up with the Lord's. It will cause you to see things differently. Listen, in order for you to operate in the peace of God is to operate in the mind of God. He says that he will keep you in perfect peace because your mind or whose mind is stayed on him. That means that there's an anointing that's released. There's, there's an authority that's released when you keep your mind set on him. There's a control that's in operation in your life. You walk in places and you're a person of influence and everybody knows it and everybody bows to it. Hallelujah. There's a command that's released through choosing to operate in the peace of God. Hallelujah. Some of you have some decisions that have to be made in your life, upcoming decisions, going through the end of this year, going into next year, hallelujah, to the next season. There are some decisions that need to be made in our nations, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And there's no way that these decisions can be aligned with the word of God without the peace of God, which is the power of God and which is the mind of God. It's the heart and the intent and the purposes of God. In order to release that, we have to release. If we're going to reveal Jesus, hallelujah, to this earth, if we're going to represent Jesus to the world, hallelujah, we've got to begin to walk and release his peace. When we release his peace, we release his glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's power in peace. And today I'm going to show you why, when, hallelujah, peace is released. Hallelujah. When you're giving it the uh, permission to work in you, what do you need to do? How do you stay in peace? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is my life. This is my life. Come on, say that. This is my life. I am in peace peace hallelujah thank you lord this message is this message from the lord is so very powerful as we spoke to you on thursday night we're not waiting for a word to be released from the lord he's not that kind of god that i have to wait until december 31st for him to tell me or to tell us what it is we need to do and how we need to prepare for what is to come. Somebody say I'm prepared. Hallelujah. If you turn with me to. Um, let's just go to the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel. Hallelujah. As we're going to the book of Daniel. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. Say peace has power. Peace has influence. Peace has control and authority in my life. Hallelujah. When With the things that we are facing today and the things to come, you've got to know that you know that you know and you've got to be sure that you are a carrier of the kingdom. And because you carry his kingdom, you carry his presence. Because you carry his presence, you carry his power. And because you carry his power, you carry his peace. But there's some things that you have to do to make sure that it's in operation because you can carry some things and they're not be operative in your life or to your advantage. They're lying dormant. But we're going to make sure that we understand and we know and we activate the peace that's on the inside of us. Somebody shall activate the power, activate the peace. This is my life. I'm in peace. I need this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so you've got to know that you carry this everywhere that you go. His peace is his power. Like the three Hebrew boys in the book of Daniel. We won't read the entire story. I just want you to turn your attention to this. You've got to go in knowing that there's power in the word of God. You've got to go in standing 
in peace. Hallelujah. The needful thing, the word of God, your cornerstone. We've talked about this, grounded in it, rooted in it, firm in it, unmovable. You've got to go in at rest. What does that look like? You've got to go in at peace. That means when you go into a situation, you've got to be undisturbed. Hallelujah. You've got to be a, 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 a soul assured of your salvation through Christ. What he's spoken about you and the things that he's released to you because you've received all of him. You've got to go in fearless. Somebody shout on fearless. Fearing nothing. You've got to go in content with what he said and not try to change and make up things about your, your life that you think will cause you to be able to come out unharmed. You've got to be free from any thoughts and any emotions that will try to come in and oppress you or cause you not to trust God. You've got to go in at rest. Hallelujah, in rest. Somebody shout, this is my life. I am in peace. Begin to say with boldness and confidence, like the three Hebrew boys, God will save me. And not just say it, but demonstrate it. They did, they did both. They said it and they demonstrated it. Some of us, as soon as the, the heat turns up and things don't line up, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, we give up, cave in, and quit. We think God has left us. Somebody say a form of godliness with no power. A form of godliness and no power. That's not me. That's not us today. Let's look at Shadrach, Meshach. Everybody should be there now. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In Daniel chapter 3, here we see that Nebuchadnezzar, we all know this story. I'm not going to stay here long. He told them, he challenged them that when they heard the sound of the horn to fall down and worship the golden image or be thrown into the fiery furnace. We all know this story. And so the Chaldeans came and told them about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They didn't pay them any attention. They didn't listen. And they said that the God that we serve would be able to bring us out. So he commanded them to be brought before him and told them what would happen to them face to face. He, he, they were face to face with, with conflict, with the decision to either stand in peace or to fall. Or to depend on themselves. He told them they'd be thrown into the fiery furnace if they refused to bow. Somebody shout, I refuse to bow. Hallelujah. He told them, they turned around and told him around verse 16. Hallelujah. That it was not even up for discussion. We're not even going to discuss this with you. They said, they answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, it's not necessary for us to give you answer on this point. Somebody said their mind was set. They were standing in peace. They were, their mind was set in peace. Hallelujah. They were undisturbed. Hallelujah. They were fearing nothing. They were content with what the Lord, what the word of the Lord has spoken, what God has spoken to them. To the point where it wasn't not even up for discussion. We've got to get to the place where we're not debating anything with the enemy. Hallelujah. Because we're set. Hallelujah. On the things above and not on the things of the earth. He answered them and he said, so they went on, they answered them and they told him this. And he told them that they were going to be, it was going to be turned up. He, and then they told him if our God, verse 17, we serve is able to deliver us from the fiery, from the burning fiery furnace. He will deliver us out of your hand, O king. Verse 23, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell down into the burning fiery furnace. 24. Then Nebuchadnezzar saw that they were that they and was astounded. And at this point, he said, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. They are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God's. Hallelujah. Listen, the peace of God was there. When you're when you're walking in the midst of the fire and you're standing in peace, the enemy has to let you go. Somebody say he has to loose me because now I'm understanding that my secret weapon is peace. I know I have something that the enemy knows nothing about. Then in verse 25, it says that they came out of the midst of the fire. They came out. Peace will cause you to come out. 
And I, I know I'm going through this pretty fast because this is not what, where I want to make my state in my main point. They came out from the midst of the fire. Somebody say, I'm coming out. Come on, declare that this morning. I'm coming out. It says the satraps, the deputies, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered around together, saw these men. So everybody saw them. That the fire had no power upon their body. Somebody shout, the fire had no power. Nor was the hair of their head singed, neither were their garments scorched or changed in color or condition, nor had even the smell of smoke clung to them. Somebody shout with me. The fire had no power. You've got to know that when you stand in peace, you've got to know that when you go in, hallelujah, undisturbed, fearing nothing, hallelujah, when a tranquil state, because you are assured that God is with you, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, the fire has no power to the point where you don't change in condition. Nothing about you changes. Nothing about what God says about you changes. You're still the righteousness of God. You're still the head and not the tail. You're still already healed. You're still above and not beneath. You still walk in authority and dominion. Hallelujah. You can still speak to scorpions and serpents and nothing by any means will hurt you. A thousand will still fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand and nothing shall come near you. Hallelujah. And you'll still be able to reveal his glory. Somebody shout nothing. The fire had no power. The fire had no influence or control over their lives. Some of you may be feeling like that you're in a fire right in the midst of some type of chaos or situation in your life. And you've got to believe that it can't touch me. It can't change who I am. Hallelujah. It cannot change my DNA. It can't change my genetic makeup. Hallelujah. Because my DNA is, is, is in the peace of God. My DNA is in the character of God. Christ is formed in me. I have the mind of Christ. I have the same purpose, same attitude as Christ. Hallelujah. And I'm firm in it. Thank you, Lord. You have to be able to stay in thanksgiving. They were in thanksgiving. And I'm going to show you that in a few minutes so that peace can abound. If you expect to come out unbound and unhurt, you need peace to be at work in your life. Some of you need to come out. Somebody shout, come out. Come out unbound. See, when they went in, he said that he took the strongest men, and you can go back and read it, and he bound their hands, hallelujah. But when they came out, they came out loose and unhurt. This is my life. I'm in peace. That's where the power is. You've got to make up your mind. Just because it may feel like your hands are tied or wrapped up or tangled up in debt, or in sickness, hallelujah, or in broken relationships, or marriage, or whatever the case may be, hallelujah, that does not determine your outcome, or even affect you while you're in the midst of it, while you're going through it, let peace have a perfect word, begin to walk around the fire knowing that it can't touch you, can you imagine the fear that you put in the devil when you walk around debt saying that it can't hurt me, when you walk around coronavirus saying that when you look in the face of cancer saying that it cannot hurt me, when you look in the face of disappointment and say that it can't change who I am, my mind is set and I'm not changing who I am and I'm not coming off of it. Can you imagine the fear that you infuse into the enemy instead of him uh, infusing fear and infiltrating your mind with his fear? Fearless. Hallelujah. That's where the power is. The fire has no power. My power is in my peace. Then it goes on to say that uh, Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angels, delivered his servants. Uh, and then he turns on to say that there is, there is no other God who can deliver this way. There is no other God that can deliver you in this way. There, here we see the power of peace and they were carrying and revealing the glory. We just told you this Thursday. They were they were carrying, they were they were carrying a peace. The power of peace on the inside of them because they took God with them and it was demonstrated. And it was seen by all. And then it turned around and those who tried to take them down had to turn around and declare that their God was God. 
God. See, there are some people that have put in some things, that have put their mouth on you. There are some circumstances that try to come up against you. And I declare right now in the name of Jesus that as they take their hands off of you, hallelujah, they'll be saved because of you. Come on, somebody say, that's me revealing the glory. They'll say that your God is God, hallelujah. And things will begin to change, not only in your life, but in their life, because it goes on to say that the king promoted them. So the very ones that try to take you out because you have released the power of peace, your secret weapon, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. The very ones that try to bring you down, the very ones that try to consume you, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, uh-oh, promotion is here. Promotion is here. If I'll just stay in peace, if I'll just be undisturbed, if I'll just make a decision not to murmur and complain, not to be contentious, hallelujah. If I just continue to walk in fear, be content with what the Lord says, stay at his feet and hear what he says to me. Hallelujah. I'll be promoted. God will elevate me. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. He'll rearrange. Hallelujah. Some things in my life. Hallelujah. And I'll be in control. I'll be in rule. I'll be in authority. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I'll be the influence. Hallelujah. I'll be the sign, wonder, and the miracle here on this earth. Revealing his his glory hallelujah because I carry his peace I'm established in peace I'm firm in peace hallelujah in the name of Jesus I'm at rest this is my life I am in peace I dare you to shout shout that three times this morning this is my life I'm in peace this is my life I am in peace this is my life I am in peace 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 hallelujah Oh my God, let me just let me just calm down. Hallelujah. Can I take my time? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh God. So we got that out of the way. Shadrach, Meek, Shack, and Abednego went in. Hallelujah. Let's talk about how we should enter every situation that we are faced with in life. Every situation that we're faced with in life they went in with their hearts their thoughts their perceptions ruled and guarded by peace somebody say i must be ruled and guarded by peace they were in a tranquil state just imagine being in the drunken with peace under its influence come on some of y'all know y'all used to drink some of us still drink I just want to make it real. Can I just be real? Just imagine being drunken. Or for the ones that's so sanctimonious and deep, let's just say under his influence. Amen. The ones that won't admit and can't get free because they won't admit the things that God has freed them from or what they need to be free from. We bind that this morning too. Everybody's getting free. Amen. The first step to recovery is to admit that you have the problem. Amen. Hallelujah. Drunken in peace. Under its influence, you're just undisturbed. You can't, cannot be moved. That means that no outside forces or no stimuli could affect their inner man. See, you, you gotta get, you gotta stop letting the devil into your inner man. You gotta, you gotta create an atmosphere that says you can't come here. You can't disturb this. I'm free from any type of oppressive thoughts. I'm free from oppressive emotions. So no matter what comes my way, I'm in peace. I'm empowered. I'm empowered in my inner man. So you cannot control my outcome. You can't change what the Lord said about me. So just think about the person who goes through a surgery. Let me see how I can make it real. Make it relevant. If you go through a surgery, you have to have anesthesia. If you're going to be put to sleep, anesthesia. So during that time or, or of anesthesia or whatever it is that they do, you can't feel what's going on. You're in another realm of, uh, 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 in another realm. You're in a realm of protection. Hallelujah while the work is being done. <laughs> Somebody say, God is doing the work. I'm in another realm of protection, undisturbed, at rest, 
while the work is being done. Some of y'all see already where I'm going with this. There's a level of insensitivity that's taking place. You're insensitive to pain. You can't, you can't feel the pain because the work is being done. The perfection is being done. Hallelujah. So you don't think about or even give attention to it. So at that time that the work is being done at this place of insensitivity, there is no room for chaos. There is no room or space for complaining. And there is no room for negativity because the focus, hallelujah, is to keep you from being in pain until the work is completed or until the perfection is done. You got to know that God has created a way for you to be, hallelujah, in a place of insensitivity to the pain, to the hurt, to the heartbreak, hallelujah, to the misfortune or whatever situation that you are in until the work is done. And the secret anesthesia that he's provided for you is peace, hallelujah, is his peace. His tranquil state that he's provided for us. Because we're sure of his salvation. Fearing nothing. Hallelujah. During this time you are at rest. That's what it's going to take. For you to thrive from now on. To the upcoming year. So where is this power of peace coming from? Where, where does this power. Like these three Hebrew boys. And this peace I keep talking about coming from. There ain't no way you wake up like that. You know, some people say, I woke up like this. Well, you can get to the point where you do wake up that way. But how do you get that way initially? What's fueling this power? How does someone get to this level of peace? Somebody say, she going somewhere. Don't log off. Make sure you hear the end of this. Where, how does someone get to this level of peace? How am I able to achieve this level of peace and not only initiate it, but maintain it? Maintain this attitude of peace. Maintaining this to, to be able to operate in the perception of peace. Somebody say it takes practice. I've got to do my part. I've got to be disciplined. These three Hebrew boys, if you go back and read it or know anything about them, they were well trained, disciplined young men. They were that's why they were hand picked by the king. They were being they were ruled by the God of peace. They weren't like Martha. We talked about they, they, they weren't easily moved or agitated because they told him, we're not even going to discuss this with you. They were not getting they refused to get into a debate. They didn't walk in this. They definitely didn't walk in deception. They knew who they were. They knew and because they tried to force them to eat their food and to take on their customs. But because the God of peace was so rooted and firm in them and they were so assured of what God has said to them, they refused to bow. They refused to eat. They refused to take on their customs. Hallelujah. Because they were they were established in the peace of God. They were established in the power of God. They clung on to, they clung just like Mary did onto every word that the God has spoken to them about who they were. They were undisturbed and undistracted. You've got to believe that there is power, Pastor Priest, this last week in this type of peace. This is what is going to be needed to carry out what you hear him say after you have been sitting at his feet. You know how they tell us now, go in peace. When you leave a church service and they say go in peace, that's why they say go in peace. You've got to refuse to bow. You've got to stay in peace. But we got to talk about how do you get to this peace? Because they stayed in Thanksgiving. What is Thanksgiving? They had gratitude. There is no way that you can do this without thanking God. You can't forget to thank the one who has gotten you to the place, who have called you to be disciplined, who called you to operate 10 times above your peers. See, that's the place that they were in. There is no way that you can get to that place and stay there without continuing to give thanks to the one who got you there. They took pleasure. They were glad. They st stood firm on the promises of God. They refused. Hallelujah. So what does that look like in everyday life? They refuse to stoop low. 
Some of you are stooping low having conversations with people that you should not be having conversations with because it's causing you, hallelujah, to consider other things instead of what the Lord has said. Think about Eve when she spoke with the serpent. Did you stop debating and making deals with the devil, hallelujah? He's not even in your class, hallelujah. He's not even on your level. How do I know this? How can I say this? Because according to Psalms 8 and 6, hallelujah, it tells me that the devil had a problem with God's mindfulness of you. He says, "Why is who is man that you are so mindful of him? Why do you love him so much, hallelujah? What is it about mankind? What is it about him or her, hallelujah, that you love him and her so much, hallelujah? The fact that he crowned you with honor and glory. The fact that he gave you his mind. The fact that he gave you the ability to see things the way he sees it. The fact that he gave you the ability to be fearless and undisturbed, hallelujah. That's why he had a problem because he knew if he could get with into your peace, he could take away your power, hallelujah. Somebody say, but this is my life. I'm in peace. I refuse to bend down to the enemy's level, hallelujah. I will allow my perception to be the perception of God. I refuse to rebel against a distorted perception, hallelujah. I refuse to, to bow down, hallelujah, to the enemy. I am clear about who I am. This is my life. I am in peace. The Lord is speaking so, so much this morning, I can't even hardly get it out. Somebody say, speak, Lord. Speak freely. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Clarity and understanding. Speak, Lord. I'm not going to bow. I'm staying in peace. I'm in peace. Refuse to bow. Practically, what does that look like? Okay. Refuse to bow. Let's do an exercise. You can call out whatever yours is. Hallelujah. I'm just going to rely on the Holy Spirit. Refuse to bow to diabetes. Y'all should already be calling it out. Whatever it is, refuse to bow to cancer. Refuse to bow to poverty, anxiety, schizophrenia. Refuse to bow to, to lack, hallelujah, high blood pressure, defeat, come on. Refuse to vote, to, to bow to coronavirus, to Omicron. Refuse to bow to a financial uh, a downfall, an economic downfall in this nation. Hallelujah, come on. Refuse to bow, call it out. Refuse to bow. I refuse to bow. I'm staying in peace. Why? Because my mind is stayed on God. I can do this because I've been studying. Come on, some of you say this. I've been studying. I know it. I've been studying. I've been praying. I've been fasting. I've been meditating. I've been believing. Hallelujah. I've been trusting. Hallelujah. When things were going well. When things were not going so well. Hallelujah. When I didn't know what to do. When I did know what to do. When I had friends who were there to help me. When everybody had walked away from me. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. When everybody had turned their back on me. When it even seemed like all hell had broke loose in my life. If I could just think on the goodness of the Lord. If I could just think on the goodness of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he is the God. He is the peace. Hallelujah. He's the person of peace. Hallelujah. So at the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When I speak the name of Jesus. I speak peace over every situation in my life. Why? Because I'm assured and what he has done for me. I call out his name. Hallelujah. I know who he is. I know who he says that I am. I call out the name of peace. Hallelujah. Because at the name of peace. At the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess. That he is Lord. And you will see that he is my deliverer. He is my way maker. He is my protector. He is the lifter of my head. He is my strength. Hallelujah. He is Jesus. 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 The person of peace. You cannot do this. You cannot live this life. You cannot enter into the next season of your life without perfect peace. And the only way you can have perfect peace is to receive a perfect Savior. And that perfect Savior name is Jesus. I dare you to call on his name right now. I dare you to call on his name. And as you call on his name, hallelujah, you should sense another shift of peace. There it goes. I'm shifting to another dimension, to another level of peace right there. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, you better give him some glory. Oh my God. Every knee. He's my strong tower. God will show up with you in every situation. Hallelujah. You will walk around the fire. Hallelujah. Walk in the midst of sickness. Hallelujah. And walk in the midst of them talking about you. They'll have to loose you. Hallelujah. And let you go.
go. Hallelujah. Take their hands off of you. Walk around in the midst of I got a bill due. I got a light bill due. Baby need a pair of shoes. Light bill need to be paid. Telephone disconnect. Walk around, hallelujah, in the midst. Hallelujah. People trying to take you out. Walk around in the midst, hallelujah, and come out unhurt, unharmed. In the same condition that God told you that you would be in. And those same people will call you blessed and ask you about your God. Beg to know who your God is. This is my life. Come on, walking in the midst of the fire and coming out unhurt. This is my life. I'm in peace. I don't have to worry about the fire when I've got peace. Because I've got the power, hallelujah, that can put out any fires. In my life, the fire has no power. The fire has no power. The fire has no power. Let me move on. Go, go to Philippians chapter 4. Stay with me, please. Philippians chapter 4. Hallelujah to 4. Hallelujah. As you turn, let me say this. If you expect to come out untouched and unharmed and see the power of peace, manifest in your life as pastor preached Sunday the perfect peace you've got to stand on the word of God you've got to pursue the needful thing hallelujah no matter what you need God hallelujah you need Jesus there's no way that you can be in a fire that's been placed seven times hotter hallelujah to 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 to, to some that uh that feels like that to some of you right now whatever situation that you're in there's no way that you can be in this type of fire in the name of Jesus and not come out without him. Hallelujah. Things heating up. Refuse to bow. Refuse to give in to the schemes of the devil. Refuse to give up and quit. There's no way you're going to be able to face the things that are to come. We keep telling you that what we're dealing with in this nation is not over. The same way the kingdom of, 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 of heaven is advancing, the kingdom of darkness is trying to do the same thing. But we have a secret. He, he hides things away from us. The Lord hides things away from us. He reveals to us ahead of time. If we'll just spend some time with him at his feet and see what he has to say. There's no other way you're going to be able to say, put me, put me in the fire. I'll be fine. There'll be no smoke. There'll be no after effects. God is with me. I dare you to, to hold your hands up and, 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 and hold your head back, stick out your chest and say the fire has no power. Boldly. Don't play with it. You got to know this. The fire has no power. You got to believe it. It's got to be down in your inner man. The fire has no power. No matter what I've been faced with today. No bill, no negative health report, no rejection. We know unemployment is about to run out, but the fire has no power. We know there's another variant of the coronavirus, but the fire has no power. We know that there's trouble in the White House, but the fire has no power. We know that the, that the judges in the courts can't get there on one accord, but the fire has no power. This is my life. I'm in peace. I'm undisturbed. I don't even give attention to it. I'm in a tranquil state. I fear nothing, and I have the ability to speak what it is at the name of Jesus and peace is released into the earth. This is too much. I know this is too much. God is with me. Going through any trial, circumstance, come out untouched, healed, whole, still put together, sound mind, money in the bank. God right there. Right there with you through his word. He's kept you, been with you the whole time. It's time to cultivate a life of thanksgiving and peace. Hallelujah. Now back to Philippians chapter 4. I know I said that a few minutes ago. Thank you, Lord. Look at Philippians chapter 4 around verse 8. Verse 8. In this passage of scripture, Paul begins by telling, he begins by telling them to rejoice in the Lord always. He begins to give them specific instructions that will result in the power of peace 
or in peace being evident as an influence in their lives. Let me just let me just calm down so I can get this out here. But the word of the Lord is like fire shut up in your bones. At least it should be. Hallelujah. Paul begins by telling them to rejoice in the Lord always. If you look at Philippians 4 and chapter 6, he tells us to be careful. I, let me read it in the Amplified. Well, he says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. We talked about this briefly on Thursday that we're in a time where in order for peace to be released in the way that, that God intends for it to be in your life, you've got to be in thanksgiving. So we can't just not have anxiety about things and pray to him, but we've got to do this with thanksgiving. Somebody say with thanksgiving. We've got to do this with thanksgiving. There are things that we have to do practically in order every day in life in order for the peace of God to be yours and to be working in you. What do you have to do? You can't fret. You can't be fussing, um, uh, um, be bothered by everything that goes on in your life. Stop allowing people to hassle you and upset you. And then you enter into worry and then you're nervous about any and everything that goes on. Stop it. And then we've got to begin to pray and petition God in every circumstance. This is what the word of the Lord says about everything. What happens here when you pray and petition, prayer is a lifestyle. We know that prayer is not for God, but what it does is it communicates to God your dependence on him. You're letting him know that you need him. You're making it very clear to him. Lord, I need you. I want you. I cannot make it without you. I'm being very specific, making sure it is crystal clear. Clear. Because what I am faced with, I know that I can't do it without you. You've got to stay in thanksgiving, hallelujah. You've got to stay with an attitude of gratefulness. You've got to stay with the, have an attitude of gratitude, an expression of gratitude. You've got to celebrate this life that you have. You have to begin to embrace this life of peace. You have to embrace this life of righteousness. You have to begin to embrace it. And with that, you stay in thanksgiving and you're gladly and with pleasure. You take pleasure in doing what he instructs you to do and how he tells you to live. And then you've got to stay in constant communion with him in relationship every single day. If you look at uh, chapter, uh, verse 7, Philippians 4 and 7, he says, when you do this, Paul tells him this. When you do these four things in verse 6, then you can expect peace. Somebody say, I, let me just go ahead and do this so peace can be released in my life. You can expect peace to manifest. You, can, you, you are creating your life of peace. You're doing this. You're creating this life. You're creating these results. Now you're controlling how you feel instead of feeling some kind of way. You feel this kind of way. Amen. Paul says if you do this, you can expect peace to manifest Hallelujah. What kind of way are you feeling? You're feeling tranquil. You're calm. You're in harmony with Christ. You're undisturbed. You're instead of all over the place. You're undistracted instead of distracted. You're not affected or moved by turmoil. But you're under the influence of peace instead of under the influence of the world and of the enemy and under his philosophy. You're not ruled by fads and fashion after the world as Romans 12 and 2 talks about. You're fully assured of your salvation through Christ. Is this good? And then your heart and mind is kept by peace. Your perceptions are ruled by peace. So you begin to see things differently. And then it garrisons and mounts a guard over your heart and over your mind. What does that mean? It provides a realm of protection. A force that defends or provides a barricade or shield around your thoughts. How you perceive things. Uh-oh, I'm seeing through the lens of Christ now. And now situations uh, 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 are actually will turn out the way God says instead of the way that you automatically saw it in doom and gloom. Now your responses are according to the way that Christ would respond. 
So once this peace is in action in your life, there's some things you must continue to make a habit of. Then somebody say, I've got to stay in peace. This is my life. I'm in peace and I've got to stay in peace. So I can't let go of it. I can't exchange it for chaos and drama. Some of y'all taking on chaos and drama and other people's stuff and you're not in peace because you're taking on their chaos and you're not in peace. And you keep exchanging your peace for nonsense, peace for chaos, peace for drama, peace for, for mess. It's time for us to start minding our own business, minding our own thoughts, minding our own perceptions and staying in peace. Can I just be real? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Look at verses 8 and 9. How do I maintain this attitude of thanksgiving and peace? How do I get to the point where it flows out of my soul <laughs> and it outpours from my spirit into my soul because of the time spent and the relationship that I built with the Lord? Remember, we told you about increase intensity exposure. Keep in mind, everything that you do ultimately is for you to gain completeness of life uh, with the effort of revealing the glory of God on this earth. Because that's what happened with these three Hebrew boys. In verse 8 it says, For the rest, brethren, whatso whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence, is honorable, seemly, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there is any virtue and excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on and weigh and take account of these things. Fix your minds on them. Fix your perception on them. Fix your thoughts on on them. He says, practice what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and model your way of living on it. And the God of what? The God of peace, of untroubled, undisturbed well-being will be with you. He says, if you do these things, if you think on these things, hallelujah, and weigh and take account of it, consider them, and then turn around and practice what you have learned, received, and heard, that peace will that the God of peace will be with you. That the God of peace, in other words, will be in the midst of wherever you are. Because somebody say, now I've just shifted to another level of dimension in peace. With the God of peace being with me. Hallelujah. So Paul goes on to tell you what this life of peace he talks about his experience with this peace. He says that he's found the secret to every situation in verse 11. He says that I don't have a personal want. Uh, not that I am implying that I was in a personal want, for I've learned how to be content, satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state that I am. See, this is what happens when you go in in Thanksgiving and you're established in peace because it's released to you because you make a point to give him thanks in every situation that you're in. Like Paul, hallelujah, in verse um, 12, he says that, or verse 11, he says that you're not, he's not disturbed, he's not disquieted. He says that he knows how to be a base. Or he knows how to be humble, hallelujah, in any situation. He says, see, or if, if, if there's a situation where he might not have everything that he needs or have plenty, he says he knows how to operate in that place, hallelujah. He knows whether he's well fed or going hungry, having sufficiency and enough to spare or going without and being in want. He knows how to live in that way. And then he turns around in verse 13 and says, that he has strength for all things in Christ who empowers him. When you enter into a lifestyle of thanksgiving and the peace of God begins to rule your heart and, your, and guard your mind, you have an inner strength that causes you to stay in peace. You have an inner strength that causes you to be like these three Hebrew boys and not be moved. You have an inner strength that keeps you from being undisturbed. You have an inner strength that keeps you in a tranquil state, fearing nothing because you are content with the supernatural life that God has set you up with. You have an inner strength that causes you not to give in to oppression, to give in to depression, that to give in to be in trouble. You have an inner strength that causes you to remain at rest. He says, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. And because of that, 
I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Now you are self-sufficient because you are in Christ. Somebody say, I'm self-sufficient. So now I'm not depending on anybody. I'm not depending on the government. I'm not depending on my, my job that I go to every day because I'm self-sufficient, because I'm self-sufficient in Christ. And so my perception is God is with me. He'll never leave me. He'll provide a way of escape. He'll release to me every resource and everything, every answer that I need. If I'll just stay at his feet, stay hooked up with the needful thing, hallelujah, continue to give him thanks in every situation, hallelujah. Peace comes in and overtakes me, hallelujah. I'm establishing it, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. I practice what I have learned, hallelujah. And now I am in a place where no matter what circumstance or situation that I am in, I have strength for all things because I have an inner infusing and an inner empowerment that causes me to stay there through my sufficiency in Christ. If you understand that, say amen. Hallelujah. Listen, in the year of 2022, the peace of God will serve as your escort. You better hear this this morning. If you'll do these things, you'll be able to do and you'll see yourself, find yourself doing unusual things at unusual times and unusual places. That means you've got to make yourself available. You've got to make it, have yourself open to his guideline and his timeline. You begin to do extraordinary, amazing things. Listen, in the book of Daniel chapter 11, I think it's 32, he says that the people that know their God shall do exploits. They'll prove themselves to be strong. They'll stand firm and do exploits for God. Why? Because that is their life and they are in peace. The peace of God will begin to accompany you. The peace of God as you do these things will begin to usher you or to guide you. His presence, this, this power of peace, hallelujah, will lead you. Some of you need to sit down and just really spend some time with the Lord and hear what he is saying. You'll begin to, I see, I see real estate increase. Hallelujah in the name. I see acres and acres of land and houses that you didn't even build. I see financial increase and wealth. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Oh, wholeness and healing. Healing this earth like never before, even during a pandemic, instead of you seeing on the news that the that the that everything that the virus is is taking over, you begin to see the reports that wholeness and healing is overtaking our land. And there'll be no earthly explanation to that. You gotta begin to believe this and hold on to this to operate in faith instead of operating in panic and fear. P promotion and increase will be able to be released, hallelujah. Just like the three Hebrew boys, hallelujah, they were promoted because they were operating in peace. The power of peace will carry you into the promise of the glory. Why? Because the peace of God is the mind of God. And if you operate in the peace of God, you'll make the decisions that God has for you to make, hallelujah. You'll see things the way that he sees it, hallelujah. Because you're standing on and you're firm in the word of God. The word of God that promotes, it'll, it'll promote you and it elevate you and, 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 and guard you as you go through. As you stand on this word of God, you'll be found standing in peace. So as I somebody say that, as I stand on the word of God, you'll find me standing in peace, unharmed, not a smell of smoke, revealing Jesus to all of the world. I declare from this day forward, come on, wherever you are, lift up your hands if you receive this. Receive this. I declare from this day forward until the end of this year and on into the year of 22 and beyond, hallelujah, I declare that you are entered, you have entered into a life of thanksgiving, hallelujah, and peace. Don't wait. I declare, hallelujah, that the, the entire year of 2022 for you, hallelujah, will be a year of thanksgiving and peace. Come on, don't wait. Do it now. We're not waiting until the clock strikes 12 at 20, December 31st, 2021. Hallelujah. Do it now. This it, this is right now starts my life of thanksgiving and peace. This is my life. I am in peace. I'm cultivating it right now. I'm walking in it right now with the needful thing. A life of glory. 
revealing Jesus. Hallelujah. Carrying his presence, carrying his glory on earth, just as it is in heaven. Revealing Jesus in all of his glory. The time is here and the time is now. This is not just for a season. This is a lifestyle that we have entered into. We always talk about being a body, holy and fully flooded with God himself. A life of power, shout a life of power. A life of thanksgiving. A life of peace. In 1 Thessalonians, it tells us that this, this, there are some things that can happen. That we can live this life of peace when we thank him in everything, no matter what. And that the God of peace will sanctify us through and through. He separates us. This peace will separate you. This peace will keep you separate from profane things. This peace will keep you pure and holy, consecrated to God. Why? Because your mindset is, has changed to be aligned with an agreement with the Lord. And he says, then your spirit and your soul and your body will preserve, be preserved sound and complete. Say in peace, blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Messiah. Don't panic. Give thanks. Receive the peace of God. Stay in peace. Know that the fire has no power. The power is in your peace. You have a secret weapon. You are ruled and guarded by peace. You have a weapon that the enemy knows nothing about. Paul even, Paul even said when he said here, when he said that do what you've heard and receive. He, verse 9, he said, practice what you've learned and received and heard and seen in me. Model your way of living uh, 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 with it, on it. He was saying everything that you heard me see, do. Everything that you've seen me do. Everything that you've heard me say. Everything that you've seen happen in my life. I'm living this life. Somebody say, I'm living this life. Me and Pastor WG are living this life. Everything, practice what you've learned from us. Practice what you've received. Practice what you've heard. Practice what you've seen in us. We, we, go, for, we go first as leaders. Demonstrating the power and the peace that comes from this life that we're talking about. Do it. If anything, do what you saw happen in us. You've seen this. Can I get a witness? That you've seen this in our lives. Hallelujah. Do it. Don't wait. Don't be caught off guard. Stay in thanksgiving. Stay in peace. That's right. I'm looking at these comments and I'm done. Nani said, this is not a fire drill like when you were in school. This is a real fire. Only God's peace can put it out. Amen. Somebody understands what I'm talking about today. This is real. And this fire has no power. Because you have got the power. You have got... This, I'm, I'm excited about this message of peace. I don't know about you. I'm so excited about this message of peace because in this in declaring this message of peace, you can feel the control. You you feel the control back in your life. You can feel yourself controlling things. You can feel things and see things shifting and going back into order in your life because your mind is in order. Your thoughts are in order. The way you see things are in order and everything else lines up from that. As a man think of in his heart, so is he. As you are thinking, you are creating those things in your life to be in order and under your subjection. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if, just let me know that you've received this today. Let us know that you've received this word today. Let us know that you're already ready for what's to come. You'll continue to stay at the feet of Jesus and not leave until he tells you what it is that you need to hear. Let us know, hallelujah, that you've received it today. Received it with gladness and with thanksgiving. You'll continue to make your request known to God, letting him know that you need him, that you depend on him. I know this was a lot today. 
And I know that it probably came uh, pretty quickly. <laughs> Amen. But I can only give it to you as the Lord reveals it to me. Somebody shout, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I'm sure that I, this is not the end of this. This is just a message, messages that are catapulting us into the next level, into the next dimension. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Don't panic. Give thanks in everything, in all things. Be established in peace. Stay in peace. Knowing that the fire has no power, that you are strong in your salvation. Hallelujah. That you're a tranquil. You're a drunken soul assured of your salvation through Christ. Amen. Praise God. If you're at a place where you, you're saying that you can't say this today because you haven't received Jesus as your Lord, that you want to get in that tranquil state that you can become a drunken soul assured of your salvation through Christ, then this is a perfect opportunity. Hallelujah. To just tell the Lord, I need you. Just lift your hands right where you are. Lord, I believe. God, I believe that you provided Jesus. That you provided a secret. That you had a plan. And that plan has been revealed through Jesus. And I receive him today. And as I receive him, I'm receiving the person of peace. And I, as I'm receiving the person of peace, I can be assured of this rescuing that he's doing in my life right now in the name of Jesus. And now I can walk in the midst of any fire, fearless, content, feeling supernatural, free from sickness and disease, free from those thoughts of suicide I may have had before I heard this. Free from oppression, depression, suicide. Free from lack, hurt. Hallelujah. Free from trauma, molestation. Free from rape, incest, disease. Free from bipolar, schizophrenia. Free, Father. Free. I'm free. I'm free. Hallelujah. I'm receiving an inward infusing of you. And because I'm receiving you, I'm receiving peace. And I can be at rest because I know that you are the end to strife. You are the end to fear. You are the end to pride. You are the end to blame and doubt. Amen. The enemy has no access to this life. This is my life. I'm in peace. If that's you, come on, let's welcome him into the kingdom. If that's you, welcome him into the kingdom. Welcome into the family of God. Yes. Welcome into the family of peace. Yes. You may be someone that you said, I've already done that, but I haven't have been walking in a, in a life of peace. Well, peace is here for you today. You're being renewed in peace. Yes. Rejuvenated in peace. Restored in peace in peace mm -hmm. and we're here the Lord is here for you today to receive if you just do everything that I told you to do you can receive this peace and not just re be reestablished in this peace but remain somebody say I'm staying in peace I've had a taste of peace hallelujah thank you pastor for that message on Thanksgiving I've had a taste of this peace the God kind of peace that he gives me and not the world and I'm not coming off of it I'm not letting go of it. I refuse to bow. I refuse to let go of it. Walking in the midst of anything that this world should try to come to me with. Staying in peace. Established in peace. Come on, one more time, shout. Come on, flood the comment section. This is my life. I'm in peace. This is my life. I am in peace. I'm in control. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pastor, you have anything you want to close out and share with us today? Amen. You heard the word. You heard the, the, the prophetic word go forth. And 
understand that when a prophetic word goes forth, that you have to receive it, accept it, and, 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 and understand it come with the prerequisites. Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will escort you mm -hmm. and transition you An unusual out, this, out of this year and throughout 2022. And the unusual things will happen. Mm -hmm. Unusual places, unusual times, unusual people. Miracle after miracle after miracle, sign after sign after sign, wonder after wonder, and you, hallelujah, will experience the manifestation of God's glory like never before. Hallelujah. Live in peace. Situations come, walk through the fire in peace. In the midst of the fire. Walk through it. Stand in the midst of the fire. Oh my God. Declaring the word of the Lord. A set mind. That set mind gives you, creates a shield around you. Come on. Take your time. It creates a <laughs> shield around you to protect you from the fire. To protect you from the fiery darts. And to keep you from smelling like smoke and your hair being singed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Standing in peace. Hey, Amen. Were you blessed on today? I mean, that word blessed, I don't know about you, but it blessed my soul. Amen. This is what they didn't tell you. <laughs> this, is, this is your life in the kingdom. I'm in peace. Yes. Amen. Amen. Takara said it, miracles have already started. Amen. You yes. have to listen. We, we're gonna close. We're gonna take up. We're gonna give you a, a, a opportunity to sow in this. One thing I want to point out is with these three Hebrew boys, he said that they said that the King Nebuchadnezzar called his strongest men to bound them. Mm -hmm. So he he knew that they were dangerous mm -hmm. because he knew they had, he knew they had mm -hmm. power. He had chosen them because of what he saw in them. So he chose his strongest men to bound them. But it didn't matter. Somebody said no matter, it don't matter how hard it may seem or how big what you're up against may what it may look like. Because it's no match to the peace of God. It's no match to the promise of God. And so science wonders if the reason why. We call them signs, wonders, and miracles because thing that occurred through them revealing Jesus that is not known to be able to be accomplished by man. Amen. Those are the types of things that are going to begin to happen. Things in your life that we know could not be accomplished by man. And people that will try to hold you down and put their best foot forward, amen, will have to let you go. And lose you. The very people that are against you will be the people that God will use to bless you. The very people that have gone against you and tried to take you out will be the very people that God used. The unusual thing. Expect yeah. the unusual thing to take place in your life. Yes. yes. You are royalty. Yes. These Hebrew boys were royalty. You are royalty in the eyes of God. Yeah, they were. And some of you are in chaotic situations right now. Some of you are looking for answers and, 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 and ways to be made out of no way. Expecting unusual. Mm -hmm. And although you are in the fire, it shall not by any means hurt you. By any means. You stand knowing that God is already working already on your behalf. On your behalf. Will you give the Lord some praise on this morning? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And as signs, wonders, and miracles are already taking place, we thank God for those of you who have received salvation. Once again, go to our website at www.thekohci.org and go go to the, uh, the tab that says connect with us and, and, and go to the tab that says I'm saved and fill out that form. And as you fill out the form, return it to us. We want to connect with you so that we can share with you what it is you obtained on today. Eternal life. Amen. Life in the kingdom. Declare to you that old things have passed away and you are a new creation. 
And as you do, we want to help you to maintain that which you've obtained. Amen. And so we give God praise for you. We thank God for you. This is the first miracle that takes place in the lives of every believer. And we want to welcome you to the family of God. Amen. Now, what you heard was a powerful word. It was a powerful word that nobody ever spoke to you and, and declared over you into your life. Nobody has ever spoken a word like this into your life concerning peace. And this is your life. You live a life in peace. Now, what I want you to do is to cause this word to be activated in your life right now by mixing your faith with what you heard and sowing a financial seed. And I declare that as you sow that financial seed, you, what you release, hallelujah, God will increase it. He will multiply it a thousand times. So if you were blessed by this word, you received it, you agree with it, amen. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you now. And whatever he tell you to sow, whatever he tell you to release into this ministry, do it. Do it in love. Do it as an expression of your thanksgiving and your gratitude. See, because when you're thankful and when you when you when you express your gratitude to God, that's a sign that you have received something from him. And when you give out of your heart, that opens the door for the kingdom to flow and the provision of God to, to flow and manifest in your life. So whatever the Holy Spirit is speaking to you now, he's speaking. Whatever he says to you, sow it. 